Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can. Just so we can get out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. The Celtics take a 2 0 series lead, beating the Atlanta Hawks 119 106. Just another dominant performance, just like game one. It kind of went exactly like game one. Um, The Hawks threw a great punch early in the first quarter, got up by like 10, I believe. So let's climb all the way back, make it a very close first quarter at the end of it. So, yeah, the first quarters were close. Game one and game two. Then the second quarter just blew up everything. The second quarter in game one results in a 30 point lead going into halftime. Game two, not 30, but they were up at least 12 um, coming into halftime. And then the third quarter comes, Hawks get their little run in, they get a little close. The Celtics answer every single run. At this point, this is what you have to do. You get a lead, which are hard to keep in this league, especially in the playoffs. The Hawks have some offensive firepower. You just have to keep hitting timely shots, control the ball. I don't like that the Celtics slow down the pace of the offense in the second half when they have a lead. Because you saw in the second quarter, they were just flying. They were getting long rebounds, forcing turnovers, getting out in transition. They did some of that in the third quarter, but the overall pace slows down when they have a lead. And I think that could be detrimental to them against a team that's way better than Atlanta. So, yeah, in the first quarter, um, the Hawks were hitting shots early. Again, they get out to a 10-point lead. Jalen hit an early shot, and he immediately grabbed at his hand. He's grabbing at his shoulder and shit. I don't really know if Jalen could get to a 100% by the end of this series. But the Hawks just aren't good enough. The Celtics have enough talent behind Brown where he could kind of take a load off. And um, the Celtics can still still comfortably win and you saw some of that tonight which i'll get into later when i talk about brown and white tatum was actually bringing the ball up a little bit more than usual which kind of converted in offense being a little bit slower um the pace wasn't there at the start that was the reason why atlanta was up 10 in the first quarter at the um 645 mark it was 17 to 9 atlanta had converted um both of their offensive rebounds into points um, the Celtics inserted Robert Williams. A couple of minutes later, they inserted Brogdon, and the game just opened up from there like it did in um, game one, two. Rob was excellent in that first quarter. Again, I'll get into that. Just his his activity on the offensive side of the ball is just showing. Everybody knows he's a great defender. He can switch. He's very quick um, on his feet laterally. But on offense, the spacing he provides when he sprints down the court, he gets those mismatches. He's sealing them, he's putting his hands up, he's going up high, grabbing the ball, and he's finishing. It just opens up the offense so much. And Hauser, in the first quarter, Trey Young kept trying to pick on Hauser. Hauser forced two turnovers on him. Um, and it was just, it just stopped their entire offense. They thought that Trey could pick on Hauser. Hauser wasn't letting them pass, and it was just hurting their offense um, overall. Second quarter, again, we saw the Celtics pick it up. A Kongu was really good in that, in that second quarter. He had a block on Derek White. Just, just erase the dunk um, offensive rebounders. He was really good in this game too. Tatum was very aggressive in the second quarter. And like the points in the paint, it's like it's a complete shift. The Celtics this season were a team that dominated you because they shot and made way more threes than you did. If they make 17 threes and you only make 10 threes, that's 21 points. That's seven threes. The game is out of hand at that point because the point differential from the three-point line it's just it's too much to overcome in the first two games the hawks have shown them no resistance in the paint the first half of game one the Celtics had 36 points in the paint first half of game two they had 38 points rob is a huge part of that tatum is a huge part of that also Derek white had 12 points in the first half all of them were twos right in the paint so that's good to see the second quarter was when they were getting out in transition they were playing great help defense um when trey or somebody would drive the guy that was over would just pick would just swipe at the ball it would take it and go down get an easy layup but the thing that kept atlanta close Dejounte, who was great in this game it started in the second quarter he had three threes in the second quarter kept them in that striking range it was 61 to 49 going to halftime he had three threes just imagine if you take nine points off of their score that's a 21 point game kind of similar to what happened in game one two and the third quarter again like i said was very similar to um to game one the offensive pace started slowing down Dejounte murray went ballistic in this quarter and he was really the only one that kept them in this game the entire time bogdanovich got hot too late he had 18 point shot 7 for 11 from the field and atlanta really killed the celtics um on the offensive glass we've seen what atlanta did to the heat um, in the play-in where they dominated. Clint Capella had 21, uh, 21 rebounds. 
But the third quarter, the it's not even like, yes, Okongu was getting the rebounds. Um, Clint Capella is getting those two, but it's the wings. Kongu and Capella are so active that a lot of the possessions, they're tipping it up, and Hunter, who had 12 rebounds, is coming up with it. Sadiq Bey, who is also very athletic, is coming up with those tip offensive of rebounds. You know, Rob is fighting as hard as he's jumping. He's jumping higher than a Kongu and Capella, but they're so active that when Rob can't fully grab it, the guys like Tatum, Brown, Brogdon, Smart, they have to box out the other Atlanta guys on the perimeter because they crash so well. And that's a lot of their offensive rebounds. It's not just a Congo and Capella. It's those guys on the perimeter crashing after Capella and the Congo do a lot of the uh do a lot of the dirty work. And the theme I've come to see in the first two games is that Rob is sensational in the first half, right? He's getting the ball, they're hitting him on switches, he's in He's an impactful guy on offense, not just on defense. For the second straight game, Rob is just a non-factor in the second half. Not because of him, but it's just that they they stop getting him the ball on switches and the offense slows down. Yes, he can catch it, turn and score, but he's not primarily a post player. He's not going to hit shots, um, well, at least threes. So the offense has to have pace to it to have Atlanta to rotate and create something that Rob can play out of. But even with the Celtics slowing down the pace, these first two games, they've done a great job at hitting clutch shots. Clutch shots aren't just, you know, at the end of the game to tie the game or, or to win. It's when you're up 18 or 19, the team cuts it to 12, and you hit a three to put it up by 15 to stop their momentum. That's a clutch shot. You know, those timely threes that Al Horford hits, those tough shots that Jalen Brown, the ones that get him to the line to stop the other team's momentum, just stuff like that. And the Celtics have done a great job at answering everyone the Hawks get before they get too close. And then the fourth quarter was just, Atlanta went absolutely cold. Um, they shot 34% in the first in the fourth quarter and the Celtics just put it away. It was a pass. Um, it was a late in the shot clock. Tatum had it, had it on the wing whipped it to Al Horford right before the end of the shot clock. He had the three. That was that was that was game right there. So um great way to answer all of Atlanta's punches. It's just good shit by the Celtics. The Celtics of course dominated in every statistical category, but one thing that has to change is the offensive rebounds of course. Atlanta had 19 offensive rebounds. They shot 15 more times than the Celtics. Atlanta shot 101 times. They only shot 43%, which is a credit to the Celtics defense and, and the Celtics are really good at continuing to play after an offensive rebound. Sometimes those are demoralizing, but the Celtics continue to play and that's a thing they're gonna to have to keep doing if they're gonna keep giving up offensive rebounds because Atlanta shot 15, I don't know, like 15 more shots. If the Celtics got 15 more shots than any team, they're, they're not gonna win by anything less than 20 because half of them are probably threes and they're probably hitting them. So we got to clean that up. 19 off three bounds, not cool. So for Atlanta, you know, you're coming out of here. DeJounte was great this game, but even though he was, I don't see him going seven for 13 from three in any other game in this series. He could still be impactful, of course, but this is the type of performance DeJounte puts up in a winning effort when he hits seven threes. I don't think we're going to see that again. Shit going bad for Atlanta. That's all I'm going to say. Trey Young again struggled. You know, this is a guy where he's a very explosive scorer. He's a great passer. He led the NBA in a total assist. And it's not only a thing that he's shooting bad. He shot nine for 22 in this game. But we're holding his passing down too. He has six assists with five turnovers. Trey Young is a guy that has averaged about eight to 10 assists since he's been in the league. He's absolutely one of the best passers in this league. When you can hold a guy down scoring wise, that's one thing. But when you can minimize the way he gets his teammates involved, the way he passes, you're doing something right. And then you're also causing him to turn it over. And then you're taking advantage of him on defense. This is not a good matchup for Trey Young. There's just nobody that he can pick on. The switches are Rob and Al and Tatum and Brown, while the primary defenders are smart and white. And then you think you could pick on Sam Hauser. But then Sam Howell is not letting you get past me and turn it over on him too. It's just not a good matchup for him. On to the Celtics players. Derek White is, he's a revelation to be honest with you. In my last video, I was telling you guys that, you know, this is a totally different player. Everybody knew that he could be a great passer, a great defender, but you have to be able to score to be your best self. Derek White was not scoring at will 
in last year's playoffs. There were times, there were games where teams were daring him to shoot and he would and he missed. And then there were some times where he started to miss and it affected his game because it affected his confidence. That in turn lowers his defensive impact and his passing. It's just who he is. But when he's seemingly your third option, he's been the most consistent player on this team. And he's a guy that you can count on to give you 16 and 17 points and play great defense. He is, in my opinion, all defensive first team. And it's just showing in this series. He had three blocks again in this game. Just great defense on Trey Young, holding him down. You know, him and Smart. It's just nothing that Trey can do with them. So Derek White, 26 points, seven assists, really getting to the hole. Him, Brogdon, and Jalen, it's so much rim pressure. Like they just constantly go to the rim. They have that in-between game. Again, Derek White had 12 points in the first half and all of them were right in the paint. Atlanta just, even though it is kind of strange because they have guys like Okongo and Capella who, who are actually good shot blockers, but it's just the Celtics have so much shooting. When they're out the paint, there's just nothing there. And you have a guy like Trey Young where Derek White is going at him the whole game. Like, He's, he's straight line driving. They'll probably do a spin move or two, but for the most part, he's just straight line driving Trey Young. And he's doing a little push shot or a floater, or he's going right to the rim. So Tatum had a good all around game, 29 and 10, um, 20, uh, 12 for 22 from the field. He hit five threes, his three. Seems like it's coming back a little bit. I don't want to jinx it, but um, he had a good all around game. He was driving, of course, but the points in the paint, they just don't have protection in the paint, which is crazy. Cause again, a Congo and Capella, are good shot blockers but when they're just not in the paint because if al's at the five they have to account for him so they're just not in the paint it's then tatum brown smart uh Derek white and brock and of course rob on the switches is just too much so yeah tatum great game keep it up brogdon plus 20 plus minus 13 7 8 a great all-around game for him too again just a guy that gets constant rim pressure if you stop him on his first move his legs just keep moving. He's the closest thing to a football fullback that I've seen in a long time, especially for a guard. He hits you with the crossover, you stop him. You put your chest on his chest and you stop him. It doesn't move him. He just keeps moving his legs and he's gonna get to the rim regardless. You need that when the offense slows down, a guy that can just get straight to the paint, make some shit happen. That's what Brogdon and White were doing all night. Just the common presences and just getting whatever they want whenever they need it and when the team needs them the most. Jalen, I'm he he had a, I'm not talking about his game. He had a cool game, 18 points, shot 50 percent, I believe, um, seven for 14. But the constant grabbing of his hand, he was grabbing his shoulder early in the game. I I don't want to bring up rest, you know, because there's no rest in the playoffs. You're not resting guys in the playoffs but he actually might need because he's hurt every five plays he's checking his hand you know i'm not saying he's hurt every five plays but he's checking his hand he's grabbing at it grabbing at his shoulder we don't know exactly how he feels um i, I hope it's like towards 80 to 90 percent because we're gonna need 27 point Jalen again in the later rounds so if there's a way where he can play less time we could give hauser some of his time give grant three of his minutes just three because he not playing i don't know let Derek white shoulder that low let brogdon shoulder that low a tad bit more maybe we can get Jalen a little bit healthier you know what i'm saying so he's not as banged up going into the rounds that we actually need him in so um but he had a great third quarter he was a guy that was hitting those timely shots getting those and ones just helping the sellers whenever they need a guy to get a bucket but thank you guys if you enjoyed the video please leave a like subscribe share to any and everyone that you can i'll be back for game three in atlanta this is nick peace